creatives welcome to this paint along of an easter bunny for art is magic i'm just going to um, do a voiceover as i paint this little bunny and basket but there will be a with some speeding up but there will be a silent um real-time version below that you can watch if you want to paint along with me but you might want to watch this first just so that you can hear what instructions or commentary there is so i'm starting with this sketch on the fabriano hot press watercolor paper i will include the sketch and the a list of materials with the lesson on the blog um i just dabbing off some of the graphite pencil with my kneadable eraser just before then just remove some but so I can still see the image once you put watercolor over graphite it kind of fixes it in place and you can't remove it so I just like to soften it a bit and by dabbing it like that I'm not rubbing the fibers of the paper too much so I'm just coming in with the first thing and I'm starting with some foliage kind of as a way to warm up because I know that that's going to be green. <laughs> so um, start with the low hanging fruit, starting with what I know first. And I am using a little mix here of sap green with serpentine genuine. And I quite often knock back that sap green with um, trans pyrrole orange just which is its complementary color so it just kind of takes the edge off the out of the green um, color of sap green I'm also dropping in like so I'm mixing between that sap green and that serpentine genuine here we are going a bit faster so that there's variation in the color so I like to sort of mix on my palette and grab little bits on my brush each time that to add variety so one time I'll go more to a um, a green bit another one time I'll grab a bit that's got a bit more of that orange in it and then other times some of that serpentine genuine which is a beautiful sort of granulating color that sort of splits a bit from Daniel Smith I'm working on this foliage here and you can really see that first leaf is more of that cascade green and then I'm adding in a bit more of that sort of yellower green. So we've got a blue green happening and a yellow green happening for variety. And I'm just uh, letting some of the white paper be. You can also see this is quite a small painting. So I'm holding my brush a lot closer for that detailed work than I might if it was a big image or a looser, washier one. So here's my little bunny model from Unsplash. I will link to that and um, the photographer's name will be below. Uh, you could pick any bunny that is speaking to you. There's quite a few gorgeous little bunnies over on Unsplash. I'm just started with a very washy light color with a little bit of quinacridone gold and titanium bath just to give him an a base and a bit of warmth with that queen gold coming in with my baskets and you can see here what I mean about dropping in the different colors so I really wanted to have some variety in this basket so I've dropped in um, purples and umbers and um, some hematite violet just to add variety to that and this is just like the the first layers more foliage just working my way around and mixing up the various greens back to my bunny with a sort of a glazing going a little bit darker more of the brownie colors now and I'm looking at the shadow areas a little bit of pinkiness around his nose I'm just and seeing where do I see the shadows in the photo and just adding in a, a darker brown in those areas at this stage. I'm 
working around the painting so that the various areas can dry and I can come back over them like I am here with a much smaller brush for some fine details in a darker colour, sort of a burnt umber uh, mixed with a little bit of Payne's Grey to get a nice dark. And I'm just doing the weave of the basket here. I'm working my way around. With those curves, I'm thinking a little bit about perspective. So they're curving in the different directions, depending on which side, which direction they'll be going. A little bit of those darks into the eyes while I'm here. So I'm adding in those corners because there should be a shadow area and I want it to look a little bit three-dimensional rather than a flat pattern. And it's and it's suggestive, you know, these um this woven basket is not accurate, it's just a suggestion of the weaving and so forth. The thing with watercolour is it dries dark, uh, dries a lot lighter than it goes down wet. So you have to keep that in mind too when you're dropping your colours in that they will dry lighter. Adding some more of those shadow tones to his eyes. And now I'm going in and I'm, I'm creating with the little brush a sort of fur-like texture. Um, there's so many ways you could approach this and on this particular day I decided to go with sort of like a, a fur-like um, texture with little brush marks. But you'll see I also knock that back which is one of the beautiful things about watercolour. As you can see here I come in and I'm softening it all. I just let it um, sit into the paper a little bit before I then bring in the water to let it sort of uh, soften. And the effect that you can get with that really depends on mostly the, the staining capabilities of the particular pigment you use. Some watercolours are a lot more staining and so if you let them sit too long they won't really move much. Whereas others, once you put them down you can lift them up so when you add water they will soften more. It also can depend on the paper you use as well. But have a little play with it. There I've just sort of put in that texture and then I'm just I'm softening it a bit I don't want him to look too I want him a little bit soft and watery and watercolor is a beautiful medium for that sort of effect it's adding in some more colors into my basket um, to make it a bit darker because you know that does dry a lot lighter I'm using the hematite um, violet here and mixing in with some purples and some umbers and probably uh, Pinamite Genuine as well which is another beautiful colour from Daniel Smith. The, the paints I use mostly are Daniel Smith and Windsor and & Newton. Turn the paper around because that's what is more natural for my hand. I'm not one of these people that thinks, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. Makes it easier. I, if there's a rule, I run. And um, turning the paper around makes it much easier, and I'm all for, all for making things work for us. It should be fun and easy. A little bit of a blush around his nose going in there. Very light sort of pinky colour. Coming in with the flowers. I'm leaving the eggs till last because the image itself will speak to me a bit about what wants to go for the Easter eggs. So putting in a light colour and then dropping in some richer colour and letting it blossom out into those flowers. They're very loose and suggestive, not um, precise flowers. They're not the focus of this painting. Some little um, 
stems, <laughs> branches, what are they called, in the leaves and then knocking them back by putting water over the top. Now I'm coming to my eggs with masking fluid and just making some patterns which will remain uh, white. I'm using a ruling pen to put that on and I'll let it dry for about 15 minutes um, before I come over the top of it with my watercolour. And I'm just basically trying to think what patterns are on Easter eggs and going for for whatever, <laughs> whatever occurs. No rhyme or reason here, just playing. Just experimenting a little bit too. What, what can I actually do with the masking fluid? And I haven't done them all because, you know, sometimes less is more, right? And I'd like to have the variety. So I'm coming in with my eggs now and dropping in some colours, a little bit of boldness on this piece. And because those eggs are up against each other, I kind of need to let them dry in between so they don't just bleed into each other. So again, moving around the piece. Now my masking fluid is wet and I'm letting these, um, this egg be quite watery. I mean, it's a beautiful thing about watercolour is how you can get those blossoms and let the colours merge like that. So it's a nice spot in this piece to have some of that. Just adding in a little bit of shadows and details behind the flowers. And love a little splatter, especially around flowers and foliage. Just lifting up a couple that might not be where I want them. Dropping some colour into that while it's still a bit wet to let it run. A few little details on the flowers. So I've got a lavender there and I think that last egg was a wisteria. Wisteria from uh, Daniel Smith, I think. Letting those colours mix together to make a sort of purple but also to add a bit of shadow. A little bit of detail on the flowers just to try and make them pop out a little bit. They're so tiny. And there's my little bunny checking him at the ref side for a reference. And whiskers. Just very lightly flicking some whiskers in with my smaller brush. Could use a rigger brush for this as well. I feel like this is the most tentative part because we've come this far and you just kind of don't want to <laughs> give him some scary looking whiskers. So I'm just kind of like flicking it out and letting it sort of lift towards the end of the flick. Some of them are thinner and some of them are thicker than the others. A little bit of variety is good because I want them as thin as I can. A few little dots like the bunnies have. Now that it's completely dry where the masking fluid is, I'm just using my finger to rub that off so that it reveals the white paper below. You can put the masking tape over a different color as well. If you want to put a light color down, then use the masking color, uh, masking fluid, and then apply a darker color over the top. That can be a nice effect as well. Now 
Now I'm just coming in with some little details now that the masking tape is off. Just adding some more pattern. You can clean up the masking tape, uh, the masking fluid lines if you want, or you can sort of wet it and smudge it a bit. Sometimes they can be quite stark and you want to knock them back a bit. I'm knocking these ones back a bit by adding the pattern and a little detail. Now I'm coming in to anchor the image onto the page with some shadow and I'm using my purple sort of mix for that. It's um, ultramarine blue mixed with some alizarin crimson and sometimes I might add a little bit of neutral grey tint to that or um, some Payne's grey if I want it a bit darker and once it's down I'm just coming in with a clean wet brush to soften those edges a little bit and let that shadow ink run a little bit. Dropping a little bit more in since that first bit that went down soaked right into the paper um, before it flowed too much. So just trying to soften that edge a little bit but it doesn't want to soften. The shadows when you put them down initially can look quite strong but as they dry and settle in um, they sort of soften in a bit and um, look more in place, I find. Still trying to soften those edges a little bit more down here. And my bunny's almost finished. Just a few more little final touches. I'm coming in here with a pencil just to add in some details and to sort of give a little bit of definition to some of the edges. I'm not going to add much pencil in. Um, it's a very personal preference how much you do. Just coming in around the focal points a bit. There's not a lot of pencil in this sort of um, painting. Sometimes I might add in more pencil marks and make them more dominant in the piece. This piece is more about the watercolour, so it's I'm just being subtle with the pen. It's a completely personal preference how much of this you add in. And by pen, I mean pencil. <laughs> Sometimes it's pen, but this piece is pencil. Just trying to define that um, separation in the bunny and went in a bit heavy so I'm softening it out with some clean water on the brush. I'm 
and final touches with a Posca pen. Um, the white whiskers just add a bit of contrast. They're not showing up so well on the piece as they did on my little practice piece there at the side. They're quite subtle. A couple of those little dots that the bunnies have. If you didn't have masking fluid, you could use this to add pattern to your eggs as well if you wanted to, or any highlights that you feel your piece needs. And there we go. I think it's all done. I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing your bunnies. Please share in the group. <laughs>